The next interrupt I'd like to look at is timer one capture. This is one of the most powerful and probably one of the more difficult interrupts to get to work. It's powerful because it will measure the precise time at event within one clock. What we did before with INT interrupts was close. I could record the time the button was being pushed within about 50 clocks because it takes about 50 clocks to trigger the interrupt. With timer one capture, I know the precise time the button was pushed. Now in timer one capture, there's two different modes. There's Capture Mode 1, Capture Mode 2. What they do is they record the time of the event um, to within one clock, or 100 nanoseconds. Um, it's a little bit backwards. Capture Mode 2 records the time on pin 1. Capture Mode 1 records the time on port C pin 2. What happens is when the event happens, like I just saw a rising edge on port C pin 1 or 2, the value of timer 1 is copied to a register called Capture 1 or Capture 2. What that does is I can then trigger an interrupt and find out what was the precise time that the event happened. Now to get Timer 1 Capture to work, I need to do a couple things. First, you have to turn on Timer 1, fairly obviously. I have to set the conditions for the interrupt. Do I want to interrupt every falling edge, rising edge, fourth rising edge, or sixteenth rising edge? Make sure the corresponding pin on port C is input, and you have to enable timer 1 capture. At that point, you are now interrupting on the uh, edge seen on port C pin 2 or 1. For example, let's measure the precise time a button was pushed. So this is what that looks like. Notice that I had a jumper going from port B pin 0 to port C pin 2. RC2 is where the Capture 1 interrupt takes. On the rising edge, the time that I hit the button is stored. Again, this isn't off by 50 clocks. This is precisely the time. So I can record the time of a rising edge. I can measure the period of a sine wave, or a square wave. I can use Capture Interrupts to record the time of the rising edge and the previous rising edge. The difference between the two is the period. I can measure a pulse width. I can measure the time of the rising edge and time of the falling edge. Here I'll use two different interrupts. Capture 1 measures the rising edge. Capture 2 measures the falling edge. To do that, I've got the following code. Timer 1 is running in the background, uh, counting every clock, every 100 nanoseconds. Capture 1 captures the time of the rising edge, stored in time 0. Capture 2 stores the time of the falling edge stored in time 1. This is what that looks like. When I hit the button, press release, I held the button down for 0.324.4615 seconds, precisely. If you want to see how fast I can hold a button down, I held the button down for 332,040 clocks, or 0 0.0332040 seconds. You can see how accurate you are at estimating one second. Let's go. 1001. That was 0.8261439 seconds. Yeah, not great. Some things you can do with this. If I can measure the time of a rising edge minus falling edge, what I can do is measure vertical leap. If I'm standing on the ground, jump in the air, then land. That was 0.9164878 seconds. When distance is 1 half AT squared, you can calculate how high you can jump. Finally, one more thing you can do with uh, timer 1 capture. If I can measure a pulse width, I can measure distance. The rain sensor in your kit is a little ultrasonic rain sensor. With that, I can measure distance. The way it works is I have to first connect it to power and ground, fairly obviously. A uh, trigger is a pulse that you send to the device from the pick. The echo is a pulse width. The width of the pulse tells you the distance to an object. What the signal looks like is this. If I send a pulse, I'll get a square wave back. The width of the square wave is the distance to an object at the speed of sound. Uh, to do that, I need to measure the time of the rising edge, time of the falling edge. Take the difference in the two. That's the pulse width. That's dt. This is using timer one capture. It's a little bit trickier. I'm just using a single interrupt in port C pin 2. So if I just saw a rising edge, I'll change the condition. I'll now look for a falling edge. If I just found a falling edge, I'll now look for a rising edge. 
on the falling edge, the difference between times is the pulse width. With that, I can measure the pulse width and calculate the distance. One count is 17 microns. So here I've got a box in front of the rain sensor. If I zoom out, you can see it. So there's the rain sensor right here. Say hi to the rain sensor. As I slide a box forward and back, this is the distance to the box in millimeters. 195, 198. The top row is the pulse width. So zooming in so you can see it. Here I'm now 126 millimeters, 134. I'm moving the box away. Now moving the box towards it. I've got another distance. Some things you can do with a rain sensor. I could have a uh, theremin. Have the distance to the rain sensor tell you the frequency. And by moving my hand back and forth, I can play different tunes. I can build an electronic tape measure. I can have it run around and look for an object and try to follow it. All sorts of things you can do with the rain sensor. The accuracy is, in theory, 17 microns. Uh, to give an idea what that's equal to, that's about the thickness of a human hair. Again, some ideas of what you can do with Timer 1 Capture. Very powerful, kind of difficult to uh, get to work, but if I can get Timer 1 Capture to work, I can now measure time to 100 nanoseconds.